Okay, we're here in Stowe, Vermont, and I'm just gonna do a review of this trailer finally. Um, starting from the front, this trailer did originally, I picked it up at the plant. Uh, I asked the dealer to have them not put stickers on it, and he couldn't get it done. They wouldn't agree to do it. So there's a whole bunch of decals on this thing that I had to remove. Just, you know, website decals and ATC logo stuff. Um, it took me like two hours, which is annoying considering the, cro the cost of the trailer. Um, here on the front, um, let's see, it's got these storage areas and um, had some issues in here. Uh, that thing uh, right there is partially covered over in tape, but I had to redo that thing completely. It, it failed. It's, it's part of the kill switch and it's made in a foreign country and something about it failed. Um, and some of the wiring in here with the batteries was uh, not protected well. So I had to go in and add um, some things over the wires so they're protected. I also added a lot of insulation wherever I could uh, add it. Um, got this faucet option. I put this in, this is basically just a, a receiver to hold the shank and uh, keep it locked. Um, generator works pretty good. Um, it's a little loud in the bedroom, unfortunately, louder than I would have hoped. It would have been great if it could be elsewhere, but I know engineering, probably the only other place would be like on the roof in the back, but that would be tough. Um, I would have liked to have seen a lock on this. I lived in New York City for 17 years, so I like things to be locked. Um, this trailer is the best Pull, well, it's the best trailer I've ever owned, but for many reasons. And it pulls like butter. It just, it pulls so straight, this trailer. It's perfect. Everything, uh, most things are very well engineered on this. Um, I wasn't going to get this, but my friend, like, said you have to get it. And I'm glad I did get an electric lift. Uh, anyway, the front is the front. And, uh, again, it pulls good. And here we have all the plumbing and electrical stuff. So uh, definitely get the utility shower. It's not a lot of money, but boy, we've been using that a lot. Um, I wanted a higher BTU heater. Again, ATC wouldn't do it. I think they need to be a little bit more flexible on things because Suburban makes a larger heater that's not a lot larger size. Um, and I think they could have done that because I use this thing year round. Um, down here, this holds the uh, um, septic uh, hose thing. And I would like two, it would have liked two of those, but again, I'm learning as we're going. This is for attaching a hose to help clean out the black tank. Now in the newer trailers, this is a 19, I think they have a port up here now where you screw in a hose. Um, and uh, I just don't know how much that thing actually works, but I try to use it. Um, as far as under the trailer, um, I don't know if you can see, I did a lot. I added a lot of foam myself. Um, that was a shortcoming on this trailer. Um, I paid for every insulation option and they were very expensive um they unfortunately did not blow the insulation over the tanks uh holding tanks which would have helped but i've you know done some work around and they did not do them in the wheel wells which was not smart um because i have condensation issues on the wheel wells so i had to go and fix that so the if I had to rate their insulation job on the bottom of the trailer, one to 10, I'd give them about a five or six. It's very expensive and they didn't do a great job. Um, apparently in the walls, they have all the insulation that I wanted and I've added a lot of insulation. Um, I got that roof rack up there, which is okay. I keep some stuff up there, but it's turned out to be great for putting lawn chairs up there to watch um, sunsets. Um, wheels and tires are good. 
Uh, they're Chinese tires, but I've actually found that Chinese tires <laughs> actually seem to last a long time on trailers, at least in my experience. Um, going back here, the ladder that comes with it. Uh, here's a crappy bike rack. That's a Chinese bike rack. It's already like bent downwards and you can see where I had some damage from a bike flying around back here. And I added uh, my own camera up there because ATCs was uh, obscenely overpriced. Um, the back door on this trailer is one of the engineering failures of it because it's not insulated. And it's really caused a lot of issues with heat when I've been down on the beach. Um, I could do a whole other video on that. I have a pyrometer and I've checked it to see what it does. And they said when I asked about it, they said they couldn't insulate it because it has channels going through it. They should have blown foam at least into the channels and done something. There should have been a way to insulate this back door. Um, they did not have an option for a bicycle rack receiver, and they should have that. Again, at this price point, this should just be a you know, $50, $70 option, and it should have a bike rack, and I had to do that myself. Um, the awning's pretty good. Um, you can pull it down on either side. I haven't, uh, I tend to pull it in when I'm not around, um, because I don't want it getting damaged, but it's, it's okay. Um, those are the, what they call the floodlights, which are not very strong at all. Um, I don't know. It's probably a, a waste of an option. I mean, any other light you could use, it's going to be brighter. There is a wonderful awning light that goes across the bottom of that, and it's like a purplish blue. That's pretty nice. Um, what else? This tire, spare tire holder um it works it holds one spare tire it's kind of a big rig for that it did not have a lock on it i added a lock um the real problem and that thing that yellow thing is a thing to drive up onto so you don't have to use a jack the real problem with this is it's almost impossible to line it back up if you have to put it back together there's like a thing you screw right there and you're moving this plate with a lot of weight on it because of the tire and it's I, I don't know, I must have spent 20 minutes trying to line the thing up so again this is a third party item that ATC just puts on there but it's poorly designed and it uh, it's hard to put back on um, fuel port wish it came with a locking cap but I'll get one one of these days um, this thing, you see these on a lot of trailers. The problem with this is you could flip it over and actually lock someone in. <laughs> That's, uh, unfortunately, those are the kind of friends that I have, uh, especially when we go to like motorsports based events, all these knuckleheads I hang out with. So that's my fault, but that's something my friends would figure out and basically lock me into the trailer. Um, this is cable port. <laughs> for a TV that can hang there. Uh, I'll go over that uh, when I go on the inside. Um, I've had some issues with the trim coming out of the door a bunch. This thing is very well designed, but it's a little fickle, um, this, this step thing. It can cause problems if you're in a really tight area, uh, like a truck stop, and you have to put that thing down because um, it sticks out. I ended up putting some reflective tape on the side, which helps, but, um, and also it carries dirt up into the trailer when you fold it in, so you have to remember to put stuff under it. Um, uh, I added a digital lock, which has been great. Uh, it would have been good if ATC would just offer that as an option, or at this price point, just give us that. The windows are, um, insulated double pane they're dark uh they do transfer heat though and and unfortunately all the shades are black so they absorb heat so they become heat sink like heaters it would have been great uh, if there was a choice i would have chosen white for the shades on the inside to reflect or silver to reflect um the heat 
Uh, what else? Um, as far as... Okay, that's the fuel thing. Yep, we went over that. Okay, this is the door for the fuel. Um, I've never actually used this, but there, you can pull it out and there's a fuel pump. Uh, you can turn on and pump fuel into, you know, an off-road vehicle or something. Um, and then we discussed this. The propane on the front is fine. It does come with those switches that you can switch over. Um, and uh, it kind of tells you when, when they're dead. Uh, let's see, is there anything else on the outside that I need to discuss? It does come with really good Dexter axles and, uh, oh, okay. This is another complete failure and this is on ATC. This window has no shade or anything and isn't even that dark and you can just look right through. So that has to be addressed. You have to put a shade on that or something. Um, and it, you might have a hard time putting a shade on it because you have the screen door right on the inside, but it should be a translucent, or it should be something where you can't see through. Um, so that is a uh, choice because I know ATC doesn't make the windows. I think Lippert makes a lot of this stuff. Um, so they need to choose a window that you can't just look through. I had to add um, Reflectix just to block that out. Um, all the lighting is really nice. It's LED lighting. Between you and me, I think they should have put some DOT tape, you know, the red and silver tape along the base of this thing. Um, I know some people don't like the look of that, but the function of it, it has three little reflectors here, which is something, but they should have, uh, they should have put the DOT tape. All right, let's walk around once more, see if there's anything I forgot. Um, I read a review of a guy who said that his trailer leaked up in the bedroom corner because of something up by where the awning is attached, and mine did that the first month I had it. And uh, um, the, uh, the dealer, Trailer Depot, Mike, they fixed it. By the way, that is like, I, I can't say enough about those guys. Uh, Mike at Trailer Depot, it's just the best dealer experience I've ever had in anything, in any car, motorcycle, anything. Like, how Mike should teach a course on customer service because he just sets a standard way above anybody else. And those guys deliver all over the country and I wouldn't buy an ATC from anybody but him after the experience that I had. Um, underneath, yeah, there was a lot of additional insulation that I had to add in areas that should have been insulated. Um, and anything else? No, the general systems work, uh, work well on this. Um, and uh, the next part will be the interior. All right, for the inside now, we're gonna start with the front bedroom. All the doors, everything is all aluminum. They make all their own stuff. This is what really sold me on this trailer, um, is the interior color. It's like this white with a very subtle, and the colors might be off because we have mixed light here. Um, basically the bedroom is very, uh, has these big windows. There's a vent on the bottom of that window and lots of cabinet space. They really utilize that well in these nice side stands. Each side stand has, uh, 120 regular plugs and 12 volt plugs. Um, nice drawers. They build all this stuff and huge amount of storage under this bed, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, very nice, uh, garment closet you can hang stuff up in and then down there is all the plumbing and engineering stuff um this is a 12 volt tv it's a, it's a pretty good tv um in the newer ones they um apparently really wanted to have a smart tv 
And they went through all this, in my opinion, waste of stuff, like to have all this battery system and everything up front that you have to add, and a lot of expense just to power a smart TV off of a battery. Now, what you could do is you buy a thing called a Roku, it's like 40 bucks, and it's plugged in right there into the USB, into, it's plugged into the HDMI port, and then you get a remote and you get all the stuff that you would have with a smart TV on their 12 volt TVs. And um, you can buy these TVs once you get the model number a lot cheaper than adding them at ATC. I just bought one and I had them install it because I wanted the brackets. And if you buy the TV from them, they will put a bracket here in the bedroom. They'll put one in the kitchen and they'll put one outside on the exterior. If you don't buy the TV from them, they won't install a bracket. So I kind of wanted that. Uh, here's a fan control and here's this, the temperature thing that I added for myself. These, this is a must option. You just have to get this. Um, it's called Air Excel. They're expensive. Um, the fans are expensive, so actually uh, ATC is not really adding on a lot with this stuff. Um, the You could have a second AC here for the bedroom, which I kind of wish I did have, but I would not want to give up a fan. So my suggestion to AC, ATC would be to find a way to put an air conditioner in this vent and have a second vent right there with a fan. That would be the ultimate, and I would have gotten the second AC had you offered that. <clears throat> But there's no way I'm not having a fan in a bedroom. It's really important. Uh, they're very good about their sensors. They have two smoke detectors and they have two carbon monoxide detectors, one for the front bedroom, one for the main area. Um, let's see, I added Reflectix everywhere inside every cabinet that I could um, just to add additional insulation. And I also, added it probably places I don't even need to underneath the bed and now if we pull the bed up um, basically that's all reflectix there and on the inside of the storage up front I added it and this is an area that you really do need it and I added it on the floor wherever I could add it I added it now this was a big deal this thing right here this is a 30 gallon water tank and a hose and it goes out and it goes across and it goes into that area. Mike from ATC figured this out as per my request. Um, so when I winter camp with this, uh, because the exterior tanks are not well insulated and I also even got the heater option. I haven't mentioned that yet, but I paid for the extra heater option, which put these, puts these uh, like heat pad on all the external tanks, but there's no way you're gonna keep a 100 gallon tank that's on the bottom of this trailer from freezing. So I made it so I can take these blue um, jugs, seven gallon jugs, and just pour like three or four of them into this at the start of a weekend and just conserve water and use the pump. Because I don't, I'm not able to find campsites in the winter that actually have active water. So this has been the workaround for me, um, and it wasn't a lot of money. Um, and Mike uh, plumbed in a valve, like a diverter valve thing. Um, so uh, the tank heaters, but I do use the tank heaters on the gray and the black to try to keep them from freezing. And I added insulation to the outside of them, which ATC didn't do. And I added, I wrapped a lot of Reflectix and insulation around the valves to try to keep the valves from freezing. Um, and I actually added heat tape around the valves, which you have to plug into. So if I'm at a campsite, I can plug in the valve heat tape, which will keep the valves from freezing. And then I usually dump right as I leave uh, a campsite. Um, so I can't keep those valves from freezing while underway um, unless I were to run the generator, which I guess I could do. So huge amount of storage, as you can see down here. Uh, and the water tank thing has worked out well. Um, the carpets are really nice, thick Sissel carpet. Um, very expensive. Jeez, I was really complaining about this. Um, 
And when I looked into it and took this carpet to a couple places to have it specced to add carpets to the rear of this trailer that match this, they all told me that this is really expensive carpet. So it turns out um, ATC was using some nice stuff. Unfortunately, I heard on the 2020 models they switched to some semi-plastic thing and it's just it's not as nice so sad it, it may be more durable and maybe you can hose it off better but this carpet is a nice sisal thick carpet um the lights this is a design flaw these lights right here reading lights are just way too bright and should be a much smaller pattern straight down these you know, anyone sleeping next to you is going to get woken up when you try to use this light. So I replaced it with just this, you know, one of these eBay uh, lights with a dimmer built in, but I have to recharge it every once in a while, but it's actually dim. So ATC, you need, this needs to get modified. But on the new ATCs on the 20, on the model, on the 2020s, apparently there's dimming lights. I've seen it once. So I'm trying to look into if I can get some of the dimming lights for this and, and change it over but boy that's something I would like the lights are functional um, what else in here uh, the plumbing I'm not gonna pull that thing open but in there's the hot water heater the plumbing is very robust they, they design it well I did have one fitting failure that blew off uh, one of those shark I don't know I had to go buy the crimp tool at Lowe's but I was able to fix it so it did one of them blew off but in general, I'd have to say it's very uh, well designed. Uh, the only thing is, is the port where the water comes in has huge gaps in it. So bugs can get in. In fact, and where the shower is also has the same problem. Eventually I have to go and put some expando foam in there, something to seal it up. But that's one of the, it, that's probably the only area in this whole trailer where bugs could climb into this trailer. And ATC really should address that and have all those holes patched up um, in that area. Okay, so that's it for the bedroom, which really is a huge sell point on this. Uh, when I saw the bedroom and I saw the, the, the new for 2019 uh, color schemes, uh, it's really nice. All right, so now we're coming into the main area. Um, you know, there's different configurations of this. Um, I got the, the dinette thing and the two fold-down beds in the back. Um, I really wanted the Happy Jack bed in the back, but the problem is, is you, you lose a huge amount of cabinet space. Um, I also paid extra to have as much cabinet space as I could have. So I had these extended. I had this side extended. Uh, for some strange reason, they they can't go further down here. I forgot what it was, but it would have been nice if they could have gone a little bit further. Um, again, these are like wonderful cabinets, heavy duty. I put reflectics and everything. This cabinet sticks out. This is where I have all my pots and pans and stuff. This thing will kill you. It'll just, you will just have scars on your head with this thing. I don't know what. Basically, Mike from Trailer Depot ground this ground this down um, and uh, made it better so I don't split my head open. But this should come with clear padding on it or something. Um, that's not good. So basically, as you can see, I got as much cabin space as possible. Now this table. Unfortunately, when it folds up into that area, you lose the potential for cabinetry. Now, on the 2020 model that I've seen, um, the table goes down somehow and makes it so the top of the table is below and you can now run cabinetry across. Uh, for me, it was more important to have more cabinetry than um, uh, as much as I could. And it, as you can see, you can use these these plastic bins and they they uh, do the space pretty well and uh, you can get these uh, these metal racks at uh, what is that container store uh, to help store stuff 
And same thing over here. So I put metal racks in a lot of areas. Um, okay, so again, as per the outside, the biggest failure on this trailer is the lack of insulation on the rear door. I put this Reflectix up, which helped. Um, on the top, you can see a roll-down thing. It's like a roll-down plastic thing and a screen. I've never used it. I probably shouldn't have gotten it. It's just not... Uh, doesn't, I don't need it. The Reflectix is, uh, I don't know, for the winter time it was up, but it get, needs to get kind of taped down a little better. I did add E-Track myself because I... Uh, ATC just charges way too much for E-Track. Uh, I got the main E-Track because it's set into the floor. It's actually inset in the floor. So I had them do the main E-Track runs. There's one there, one there that run the length, and then one that runs to like that trash can. The one over here, ATC, hello, should go all the way up on the side, and I shouldn't have to pay for that. That should be the same price as it is with just adding the option of the entire length. So I had to go and get E-Track myself and uh, add it into this area because when you start to put motorcycles in here, you have to have something to hold down onto. So I added that. Um, and then there is a piece that goes down and runs that distance. Also on the back door, the back door is pretty good. It's a non-skid surface. Um, I also added three things of E-Track on my own, you know, uh, two strips on either side and one down the middle. Um, so I can attach things to the wall. As you can see, there's some attachment points there where I hold tables and things like that. Um, these carpets, I got them through Amazon and they're nice. They kind of have the same sort of feel as the other ones. They're not sisal, but the color is the same. They're about $120 for each rectangular piece on either side, so $240 for just this area. The carpeting, the custom carpeting that matches over there for for just the rear area, I don't even can't remember if it was a kitchen or not, but it was like a thousand dollars. So it was crazy expensive. Um uh, okay, windows are good. They're a little stiff to open. It's very hard for small kids to open and close these windows. It's also very hard for small kids that don't have a lot of strength to open and close this like din dinette. And these, these things that fold out are notorious for being difficult to open and close. Um, what else? Uh, okay, this thing. One of the options at ATC, I, I haven't checked their site lately, is a fold-up extension to the counter. Uh, rudely overpriced at ATC. I actually complained through the dealer. It's just at this price point of trailer that you should just have this. It should be part of it. Or don't nickel and dime us ATC. Just add this in, and if you have to make the trailer 80 bucks more, just don't let me know and don't don't try to charge me for this. It's just it's not right. And the same thing with this. Mike, being Mike at, at Trailer Depot, just gave me this because I complained about it so much. This sinker insert here, ATC wanted I think a hundred dollars for it. It just should come with the trailer. Okay? It's you can't nickel and dime at this price point. Um, the light here, as you can see, I just have some tape hanging down over it. So this is kind of the night light now. It's it's just too bright if you don't have the tape on it and would affect anybody sleeping in this area. So again, you really want to have the um, uh, dimmable lights, which I think are probably optional. They shouldn't be optional, it should be standard. Um, now here you can see there's some residue around the sink. It's a lot right here. I just noticed this the other day. We were at a site for about a week doing a lot of you know washing dishes. And unfortunately, the sink slightly moves. And the new ones, the 2020 models, have the countertop over the sink, which is a better design. This, unfortunately, I think takes some water in underneath it. And I don't really know how to deal with this yet. I have to talk to Mike about it. Um, one of the real annoyances on this thing is 
these these uh, shades. I put pads on a lot of them. When the wind is moving a lot, they clink. They should have rubber padding on the back of all of them before you get the trailer. So you don't have to deal with that. That's like a real annoying thing because you're hearing that all night. The, um, the water pressure and everything's well designed in this thing. It's really good. Um, the, uh, I hate to show this, it's probably dirty, but uh, that's not too bad. This works well. I mean, I would have liked to have had a third burner um, and I would have liked to have had a regular oven, but they don't offer that. But I'm dealing with that. The microwave, I've actually come around on this. It's a convection microwave, and we're able to cook salmon in this thing. It just takes a little bit longer than it normally should. But we're able to cook salmon. We're like baking it, basically. And it's very, it turns out to be very good. Um, so the convection microwave is actually OK in here. Um, then you got some storage under here. It's not very deep, this bottom storage. But you know they did put storage everywhere. Um, the breaker box area is the top of the line. They did. Again, they're using good components. This is uh, uh, something, I forgot the name of it, but I upgraded my last trailer to this brand um, of breaker box. And uh, uh, it, it's the IntelliPower made by, I forgot who it's made by. But again, they use good components. The fridge has been great. Freezers worked great runs from gas and electric, switches over. Sometimes it won't switch over and it'll start blinking up there. And what I've found, it usually has to do with kind of bleeding the propane. You go, you start the stove and you run some propane through and then it'll kind of start. Um, here's the control panel. Um, actually up there is a TV mount, which I never put a TV up there. Here's the control panel, floodlight, you know, my own temperature thing I added. Uh, ATC should have temperature gauges like that already installed. The generator controller, awning extension, awning light, um, some of the light switches, fan controller. Again, you just have to have these fans. Okay, here's another thing. I wanted a oven vent. It's not rocket science. I wanted it. ATC would not do it. They need to become more flexible at this price point. It's not a big deal. I should have been able to pay a couple hundred dollars more, or three hundred dollars more, and have an oven vent mounted right there that goes externally out the side. They just would not do that, um, and uh, the dealer could do it, but they should do it. All right, here's my tank heaters. Uh, there's one called Waterline, which is completely useless. It, in fact, I never got back to ATC about that. That they have like insulated they have a I don't even know what it is but the water line is not insulated so there's no point in even trying to heat it so it's doesn't make any sense fresh tank is a heater pad and the gray tank and black tank are heater pads again these need one actually I'm not sure these might run off a of battery but they'll probably run your battery down quick um, and here's the tank stuff uh, water heater, uh, water pump, and light. So again, just like with every trailer I've owned, the uh, the tank gauges are inaccurate, especially black. It gets gummed up with paper and stuff, and it doesn't work right. I told ATC, I asked them, do they have the? There's one that works externally. It doesn't even need a sensor in the tank. It has something on the outside of the tank. It's actually accurate you know to, to show the liquid level but they do not offer that they use the cheap sensors and they were wired actually the wiring under the trailer around the tank sensors and the the uh, heat pads was very poorly done just hanging not protected not battened down uh, whoever did that was like a kid on a summer job five bucks an hour you know really not good uh, you know they work they're functional except for the water line which is useless but I had to do a lot of cleanup batting down the wires and cleaning stuff up down there so that could have been done better anyway um and the Dometic this has been replaced once and now the new one is starting to do a little weirdness too so I'm not sure what it is but it's 
it will kind of go off and then go right back on immediately. It'll do that a few times. And then it wasn't staying on. I would set it, then I'd go to work, and I'd come back and be totally hot. But they replaced it, and the new one seems better, but I don't have a lot of faith in it. I know Dometic's a good name, but don't have a lot of faith in it. Okay, this is, I think it's 15,000 BTU. I'm not sure. There's no upgrade choice of the AC. Um, and this is right on the edge. And I, where I come from, ACs should be able to go 20 degrees below ambient. This has only been able to go um, about uh, 10 degrees below ambient. So I'm not sure about that. Yeah, cold air comes out of these vents. You can go up here and you can switch this thing to that which makes all the cold air blow out right in this area, which will help this room, but then you won't get anything in the bathroom or the uh, front bedroom. So I kind of wish I did have that second AC up front and a vent. If, if ATC could offer that, they should offer that. Um, and what else? We talked about the E-Track. Oh, okay, this I added. This is actually a motorcycle chalk from Harbor Freight. It was pretty cheap. Um, but unbelievably, this little bolt thing that goes into the E-Track, only place I could find one with a long enough thread to go through that thing was from McMaster Car. And it was like, I don't know, I think it was like 50 bucks. It was unbelievably expensive for those bolts. But, um, it basically bolts this thing to the E-Track, which is good. And then I buy a bunch of these cheap carpets from Lowe's and stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it. It does come with a fire extinguisher, another carbon monoxide sensor. It has these Salem vents, which I've covered over with. Oh, it doesn't come with any like coat rack or anything. And I had to find one that would actually catch the beams in this and look decent. So, it would be nice if they had a little bit more of stuff like this, like a coat rack somewhere. And it would be nice if they had something here as far as like a spice rack or some way to utilize this a little bit better. Um, I, this here is a suction thing that I stuck on because I didn't want to mess with anything. Um, but, you know, everything works and works well in here, just a few things. Um, and I guess that's all. The Salem vents will allow bugs to come in, so you got to be aware of that. Um, they do have plugs here in the back. It would be nice if they also had a 12 volt. Wherever they have plugs, they should have 12 volts. Like they have it over there, but they don't have it over here. Um, and I think that covers everything for the main area. Okay, the bathroom. This was a huge sell point on me also, besides the front bedroom. You have the custom carpets in here. I added like a toilet carpet or whatever you want to call that. Um, it's a very functional, good bathroom. Uh, the shower has this fold-out thing that comes out that gives you a lot more space in the shower. Um, huge shower. You don't even, you know. Oh, and I forgot, one of the main, I just gotta mention this, you don't, in my old trailer I had to have like a dome to stick my head into. This trailer I think is seven and a half feet interior and that's what really is a huge sell point on it, having that. Um, Cheap kind of Chinese garbage stuff, but nice finish, so it kind of looks nice from a distance. But this whole thing separated and just broke. I had to use like JB Well to put it back together. But it works okay. And this is not an ATC problem, but because I've seen this and felt this in other trailers. For some reason, when you let go of the button to shoot water out, it gets really hot for about a second and a half and then goes back to the normal temperature. So I don't know why that is. So you have to kind of start the water not on your body and then move it onto your body. Um, it's got decent storage. It's a great functional shower, perfectly fine. Huge uh, overhead storage here. 
and uh, you just can store a lot of stuff. The general design of this is pretty good. You can see I've got my coffee maker here because uh, it takes up too much counter space in the other area. Um, really good fan that you got to put on high. Um, this area here is generally good, just a few things. I don't know why, but after you got three kids brushing their teeth, it seems like there's like toothpaste splatter everywhere. It's, it, you know, it's a small sink, but again, it's very functional. Good water pressure, everything, even while on the 12 volt pump. Um, huge amount of storage space below. Um, really store a lot of stuff uh, in here. Um, toilet is great. It's domatic. It's very, it, it has this cool thing where it kind of feeds water into it automatically. Um, it's a foot pedal pump toilet. The only thing that annoys me in this bathroom is right here. The toilet paper uh, is on this kind of vertical thing that's gotten loose, but that's not the annoyance. Is where it is. It's right below this towel stand. So your wet towel is like always over the toilet paper. So they need to move the towel thing up, I think, would solve that. And if they took this this kind of towel thing and made maybe one here and one here and then they wouldn't need this kind of they wouldn't need this kind that's just a pet peeve because I got a wet towel on my toilet paper a lot but uh, this is a great bathroom it, I think they should have added instead of a flat mirror a medicine chest an additional thing with the bathroom and heat basically there's a heat vent there the heater is basically behind that wall there the heater cranks out heat in this bathroom the best of any part of this trailer. And what I'd like to try to figure out is how to divert some of the heat that's coming out of the base of the shower into the front bedroom. I unfortunately had to spend one night at about 20 degrees in a truck stop and uh, I couldn't run the Jenny all night. Um, so I'm running propane heat and it was way hotter in this bathroom if I could have diverted some of the heat into the front bedroom because the front bedroom only has one small heat outlet. So I'm going to try and modify that, but that might be, I don't know how they could better design that, but I think most people, obviously they got to have heat behind this whole wall because that's where all the plumbing is. On the same token, it's nice to have heat in the front bedroom if it's very cold or more heat. In summary, uh, I've been pulling this trailer with that Yukon, which is, you know, 1500 uh, rated thing. So I'm within the tow specs of it, uh, weight-wise. Um, it has no problem pulling it. This thing is actually very light. It pulls very straight. The only thing is the stability with the Yukon. It's a soft suspension, so you don't get the stability when there's a lot of wind and then you have some issues with uh, tongue weight. Even though I'm within the spec of the tongue weight, the load levelers built into the truck have to be able to handle that. So I'm probably gonna upgrade to a 250. Um, but just in summary, you know, if I had to rate this trailer overall, I'd probably give it a nine. There's a few things, like the back door, um, but it's very well built. It's very sturdy and just, I love telling people the only piece of, a, of wood in this whole trailer is a wooden spoon in one of the drawers. I mean, that's a great marketing thing right there. So it's a fabulous trailer. And uh, if you're interested in one, you should call Mike at uh, Trailer Depot. I'm not affiliated with him. Um, and I'm not affiliated with ATC, except I'm just an end user. And uh, I'm very happy with this trailer.